What is going on, everyone? It's your guy, Cole Jackson, back here on Road Graders. And today we're brought to you, courtesy of the Russell Street Report, brought to you by dnltinting.com. Window tinting, headlight restoration, vinyl graphics, paint protection, and car detailing needs located in the Baltimore metro area. Go check out dltinting.com for all the services they can provide you. And today we are going to be talking about Ronnie Stanley, obviously a hot topic lately. One of the keys to the Ravens' uh, success down the stretch is going to come from offensive line play, and that includes their blind side. And, uh, you know, Ronnie struggled. We've done a number of videos. You guys have seen the issues that we've taken a look at. You can see on the screen there in the thumbnail that uh, I threw up his PFF charting because on 44 pass attempts he was only charted with one hurry allowed got an 86.4 pass blocking grade so pff had him charted pretty well but it doesn't tell the full story right it doesn't really tell us how does it look compared to what we've seen so that's what we're going to do here today and so i mean if you're new to the channel um if this is your first time here first of all everyone go hit the like button hit subscribe if you're new here and uh you know you can go back search through my videos and see kind of an analysis of what i think his problem was and it still showed up here so you see on the play on the first play that we're going to take a look at you're going to see that anchor right where guys are lining him up bull rushing him and right there you see him get squared up and you see him getting driven back there. And that's kind of what the struggle has been with Ronnie so far this year. And so you see him getting pushed back right onto Lamar's lap. Lamar's kind of throwing that. You can kind of see his hips are bent all weird just because that that was just kind of consistently happening. So that did show up in this game. We're going to see it here again. See him kind of getting pushed back. And he, watch Lamar's feet on this one. I thought this was really interesting. So he's going to release it. And he's getting pressure, right? He's getting Aaron Donald's crossing John Simpson's face here. Ronnie's getting pushed back. And you're going to see him, like, run straight up in the air. Watch his feet. You see that? Like, it's almost like he's nervous. He's going to get, you know, his lower body taken out. So I thought that was interesting. But, you know, so did this problem show up a little bit? You're seeing it a little bit here. But this was nice to see. This was a solid rep where I felt, you know, he kind of got lined up. You can see helmet crosses inside. We're bracing for contact. We take a step back there, but then we plant our feet and a little bit better bend there, right? That's been the problem that I've seen. After that knee injury, really struggled to absorb contact by going through his lower body. Seems a little bit better there. Um, so overall, overall, definitely better. What a catch by OPJ. Um, a little bit better, but what I really want to focus this video on is I would imagine Coach Joe D, Ronnie Stanley, worked on this a ton in the... Uh, in, in the final, you know, in, in the full bye week. And this is where essentially, so you're going to hear me say short cornered a lot. So what does short cornered mean? So you're going to see him keep his hat inside the edge defender. So lining it up here and essentially playing a half man relationship where he's going to essentially line up his outside hand with the middle of this guy's body. And what he's doing is he's allowing a short corner. And what, what I, when I say that, it's essentially that loop when you run around and you see guys bend. If it's a short corner, it means he's short. Like it's usually you're trying to push him out the arc of the pocket. The pocket comes back like this and you want it to kind of go like that. If it's a short corner, it's just, you know, almost cutting in half. And so you're going to see it right here on this play. So you see he lines up half body relationship and that's a bit of a short corner but what ronnie's doing with this and you see him start to turn and then he wants to push out the back of the pocket right and so the advantage of doing this there's kind of good and bad to it and i'll show a couple plays to show the bad the good is he's protecting against both the inside move and against the bull rush because he's not allowing the edge rusher to square him up he would essentially be going through his arm and if he goes through his arm he can turn go hip on hip and push out the back of the pocket so you risk giving up a short corner to bend around and you can see right here the line lamar's standing on and here that's a quick path right versus in a vertical set we want to kind of land back here and then wall off the pocket um so obviously pros and cons but this allows ronnie stanley to not get bull rushed and have a little bit more control um in the rep so you're gonna see it again here see so he's gonna push out here you see how he's got half man relationship he's forcing him outside and then you know short corner see he's gonna he's gonna bend it here and this is where there's a little bit of risk right because he's got a straighter line but it's allowing a little bit more 
control for Ronnie and he's not getting pushed into the pocket. So you're going to see it again here, the edge rusher coming off the edge. See right there, Ronnie misses his hands, but he's trying to do the same thing. This was just a missed punch, so that's just bad technique in his punch. He's standing straight up, but he's aiming to do the exact same thing that he's done on the last two reps. And see right here, so this, he wants to drive out the back of the pocket and, Ron, and Lamar can step up while he pushes him out. So when I said it has good and bad, the bad is if he's going to do this and ride the player out the back of the pocket, that works for Ronnie Stanley. But what it does is it puts a lot of pressure on these three interior players because it's going to force Lamar to step up or step out this way. And so ball comes out. John Simpson had a really good rep on Aaron Donald here because he steps up. This is that OBJ touchdown. What a throw. Um, but it's going to, again, pressure those interior guys, force Lamar to stand up. That's just Lamar stepping up. I know this was a little bit underthrown, but if you look at the pocket, it's because he had to step up, reset, and then throw. It wasn't you know, necessarily a clean pocket. I know no one's charting that as a pressure. Um, you could argue that it is because he's forcing the quarterback to react so um be curious on opinions on that do you guys think that type of play counts as a pressure where lamar has to step up or to you is that simple pocket management i'm always curious on opinions there um so here you see this was one that really stood out to me so he gets out quick see how quick he's out in his stance and typically from ronnie is we'll see him continue to drop and continue to run that vertical set but he's kind of slows down and instead takes a narrow step right here so he's just kind of playing that and then you see him split the man and then he's going to take that outside hand hook and push it at the back of the pocket and where he starts to wall off and creates that step up lane move my screen all over the place so that's kind of the technique i saw from ronnie kind of liked it to be honest like it to me it looks like ronnie sat down and said how can i gain more control so I think you see the pitfalls. I think it does put pressure on the interior line. It forces Lamar to sometimes have to step up in the pocket. But if they can really scheme that, for example, having John Simpson come out and help him um, when they don't have to slide to help Simpson or he's not in a one-on-one, -on -one, that's a way they can kind of take care of that, push the guy further, create step-up lanes, create rush